A year ago, we happened upon a small area where a vast ocean beach once existed. Within the rocks that were once an extensive sandy shoreline, we found small fossils. And although we were surprised to find fossils there, we didn't linger, pressing on instead to other areas. But over the winter months, we read about the geology and became more and more curious about what we had seen. So today we are driving many miles on gravel roads to systematically investigate last season's discovery. We're inviting you along, hoping you'll enjoy the experience as we look more closely. We have several more miles to drive, so we'll send you ahead on an imaginary aerial journey. We'll meet you there. geologic history are recorded in these rocks. We'll compare what we have read about with today's observation. We are now looking directly at the two white sandstone layers that are the prominent feature of the Eagle Formation. First, let's level things out. We'll compare our Google Earth view to a detailed photograph we took of our study area. At the bottom of the formation is the older of the two sandstone layers. Trees are growing in the easily eroded middle sediments. The upper eagle sandstone is here. This illustration, a detailed stratigraphic section, is taken from our primary research reference. It's a bit much for our purposes, so we've made this simplified version. And then connect the key features in each with a very real outcrop we've come to examine. We'll come back to these graphics from time to time as we work our way up the outcrop. Those of us who drove have now reached the top of the outcropping. We'll set up a camera here and then hike down to meet you. This is the view of our Eagle Formation outcrop from the top. We'll hike along this ridge to get to the lowermost sections of our formation. So we're headed for the bottom. We're anxious to get started, so let's hurry this along. And while we approach the bottom, let's consider how this remarkable sandstone may have originated. In this satellite photo of the Texas coast, a current barrier island environment exists. Let's use it as a base to reconstruct the two million year interval when our eagle formation was created. A barrier island environment includes a wide range of very different ecosystems.
During this period, sea levels fell. Areas that had been covered by the sea became the new coastline. After a million years, sea levels rose again, creating an opposite sequence of deposits. And now, 82 million years later, the sediments are exposed through erosion. The parts of the sequence that were once sandy beaches make up the white sandstone we see today. Let's consider our plan for the day. We intend to systematically examine each layer as we climb up through two million years of geologic history. When we get all the way back to the top, we'll talk about the fossils we find in each layer. And finally, we will summarize by considering what we have learned. We have not yet reached the extreme bottom of the Eagle Formation, but already we can see fossils. Let's take a closer look. These are the burrows of animals that once lived in the sand just below the low tide zone. Some are simple, others less so. We intend to look at these trace fossils more closely, but first we want to go all the way to the bottom of our eagle formation outcrop. Loose spots of fossil vertebrae on the surface of the underlying ocean deposit. Much of it is missing, but the surface preservation is great. Our research shows that the Eagle Formation begins immediately above the deep ocean deposits of the Telegraph Creek Formation. The lowermost white sandstone is the Virgel member. The transition between the deep ocean deposits and the sandstone is conspicuous in this photo. We take a close look at the sandstone. There are hundreds of traces of sand-dwelling animals. And what appeared from a distance as featureless sandstone now is revealed as a record of a complex, ancient, shallow water ecosystem. Invertebrate animals, such as shrimp and worms, may have created these burrows. There are several layers to some of these trace fossils. Close by, we can see how similar fossils appeared from above and from below. We'll remove one of the larger ones. The core of the burrow is much harder and more dense than the surrounding sandstone. The litter here is comprised of sandstone fragments eroded from above. Densely packed burrows gradually yield to relatively plain beach and dune sands. Ocean levels dropped. Sediments from rivers, lakes, estuaries, and floodplains accumulated.
Looking closely, we can also see fragments of fossil plants from the time that these deposits were laid down. This thinly bedded sandstone appears to be from lake deposits. And even here, portions of plants that live nearby are fossilized between the layers. We're anxious to get started looking at the upper coastal sandstone, the upper eagle member. There is a striking contrast where the last of the marsh sediments give way to the encroaching coastline. Sea levels are rising again. Interbedded layers of mud and coal are abruptly smothered by a new sandy coastline. While this sandstone looks similar to the Virgel, there are remarkable differences. Instead of burrowing animals, these layers reveal a startling abundance of rounded pebbles. We are nearing the top. Looking up from here, we can see a very hardened capstone jutting out above the upper eagle member. We're almost there. The beach sandstone ends as rising sea levels cover the coast. As the encroaching ocean deepened, occasional storms battered the coast. Large waves churned up the beach, dragging shells, pebbles, and other relatively dense objects into deeper water. Fossils include various species of clams and other invertebrates. Mixed in among millions of pebbles and shells, we find this wonderful little shark tooth. And then, immediately above the capstone, Chert pebbles are mixed in with subsequent interbedded layers of sand. Even here there are occasional fossils. We'll talk more about the fossils in a minute or so. We've reached the top, back to where we started earlier today. The various layers of the eagle formation at this place compare positively with those studied in our references. And during our day-long investigation, we have learned a bit more about the environment at this place as it existed during a two million year interval beginning about 82 million years ago. In this section, we will review the fossils we found in and around our eagle formation outcrop. In keeping with our established protocol, we will begin at the bottom sediments, again working our way to the top forward in geological time. Below the Eagle Formation are sediments of a deep ocean deposit, the Telegraph Creek Formation. It is in these marine deposits that the first of our fossils was found. Lou found this vertebra lying on the surface of the ocean deposits. Its location cannot be positively determined as it may have eroded from any of the layers above. One expert has said that this vertebra may be that of an ornithischian dinosaur. In these detailed photographs we can see that the processes have been broken off recently, not before it was originally buried. There are thousands of trace fossils in the lowermost portions of the eagle formation, the Virgil member. Trace fossils, in this case the burrows of animals, may be a bit inglorious when compared with those of bone, teeth, or shell. But even if they are not particularly exciting, they reveal a complex, 
shallow water ecosystem. Just a few feet away, we can see what these burrows look like from above and from below. The concentric rings of color appear to be minerals that leached into the sand over millions of years. The sandstone itself shows a lot of cross bedding, indicative of a wave-dominated shoreline. The animals appear to have lined their burrows with some sort of hardening material. Back in the lab, we cut the core with a rock saw. Smoothed and polished, we can see a core of sand surrounded by the hard deposits that we believe were created by the animal that lived in the burrow. Many of these burrows appear to have been dislodged through severe wave action and redeposited higher in the column. And there are a wide variety of these trace fossils, probably reflecting a wide variety of animals that lived within these shallow water sands. In the middle sections, we find very fragile fossil remains of plants. Here are a few. Included are chunks of fossilized wood. In the hardened sandstone, above the Eagle Formation, we find a large variety of fossils and huge numbers of each. This nice little shark tooth is among our discoveries. Among the pebbles are occasional fossils such as this vertebra probably that of a mosasaur. The sand and pebbles still adhering to this vertebra indicate that it was included within the conglomerate. And this cross-section shows that even the vascular voids within the vertebra were filled with sand. And of course there are a couple of unidentifiable pieces of fossilized bone. Any good adventure ends with more questions than answers. This one certainly did. We will return next season to continue our exploration.